I don't know about y'all, but I think CM Punk is the most toxic wrestler in the world of professional wrestling. And we finna get into it. But first, intro. Yo, what is good, fam? Bam, it is your boy Jason JV saying welcome to another reaction video. And yes, yes, y'all. And before we get into it, I want to, I want to, you know, preface um, why I said what I just said in the opening bumper. Um, oh, if for those of you who follow wrestling, you probably know where I'm going with this. For those of you who don't, and if you're new to the channel, if you're not aware, your boy is uh, an avid wrestling fan. You know what I'm saying? I've been a wrestling fan ever since I was a little kid. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so is the homie Alpha Tyler. Shout out to the homie Alpha Tyler. As a matter of fact, me and him, we were just having a discussion about CM Punk that he and I seem to be in agreement in, um, or in agreement with, I should say. And we were having a little conversation with someone in his uh, live uh, Twitch chat uh, in regards to CM Punk. So anyway, uh, let, let me go ahead and preface this by saying, look, I, I feel like CM Punk is a problem child in the world of professional wrestling. Reason being is because this dude has a history of beefing with a lot of people whether it's on the wwe side of things or now currently in the aew side of things most recently it was reported that him and jack perry um who's a aew wrestler because that's where punk is now currently wrestling in aew and yes for those of you who may be wondering jack perry is the son of luke perry uh, may god rest his soul um apparently jack perry and i'm not gonna paint jack perry as a saint or anything um but apparently dude had um cut a promo at some event i guess AEW had, had an event called all in or i don't know or it, it might have been one of their their tv shows but anyway they just did a show not long ago and jack perry just came out and apparently he cut a promo and said some and popped off about punk and um that got punked all riled up in the back and from from what I heard, okay, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm not going to act like I was there and I saw everything that went down. But from what I heard, Punk was so upset that of what Jack Perry has said in his promo that he dude got physical with him. Um, at least that's what's being um, told, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and if I hear you know any updates and find out that that's not the case, then I will update y'all. But for right now, that's the story I'm kind of leaning towards because more people are saying that that's what happened. Punk got physical over, you know, a promo that Jack Perry did to a point where yeah, they they, they were brawling backstage and Samoa Joe had a had to break up the fight because Samoa Joe was wrestling Punk that night. I guess in the main event for uh, the AEW Championship. And uh, Punk was, I guess, was so heated or whatever with, with the whole situation, he was starting to quit. Why Tony Khan won't just let this man leave is beyond me. I mean, other than, than the fact for, well, I don't know if it's fact, but from what I'm hearing, Tony Khan apparently is a CM Punk stan. So I'm probably going to trigger some CM Punk stands. There's probably going to be some CM Punk stands in my chat. That's fine. Let them, you know, do what they do. It's all the way good. <clears throat> And, uh, so Punk gets a lot of preferable treatment from Tony Khan, who is the owner of AEW. It's only now because there's been so, so much drama circling around Punk ever since he came into AEW that Tony Khan finally said, all right, both you and Jack Perry are suspended. We're going to investigate this whole situation, see what's, what's really going on. Um, now leading up to this point, Punk is by all means, not a saint. He is not an angel by any means. This dude has popped off about, you know, several members of the AEW roster. Um, he had said something about, oh man, I don't know why I'm blanking on this tag team. Um, but it, it's Matt and Nick Jackson. Someone will, will give me their, their tag team name. I don't know why I'm blanking on it right now. But he says something about them. He says some shit about um, Hangman Page. Um, and some, some other guys that I, I can't really remember right now. And then he even said some shit about AEW, the company itself, the company that has him 
under their employ. The company that is paying him, that is feeding him. He even down talked AEW. And why Tony Khan still keeps him on is beyond me, other than the fact that he apparently is some kind of fanboy and whatever, and just lets Punk basically get, get away with murder, I guess. Um, yeah, and what does all this have to do with the video we're about to get into with, with Grimm? Well, Grimm, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of, uh, uh, the Grimm's, uh, Grimm has mul multiple channels. He has the Silly Super Pop channel where he hosts, um, his, uh, independent, uh, wrestling promotion, simply known as GTS Wrestling, which stands for Grimm's Toy Show. Um, and then he has this channel that, uh, this video comes from, which is called the, the, uh, Grimm or Grimm Experience. And Grimm's been doing a video series because he's actually worked with some former WWE, um, TNA uh, wrestlers. He's also worked with wrestlers that are future WWE stars, uh, some of which you might recognize in this video that I'm about to play for y'all. And he's actually worked with future AEW wrestlers as well. And how Punk is relevant to this video, I mean, you should be able to see him. He's right there. Uh, Grimm has actually met Punk, and Grimm is going to give his story about his experience meeting punk and how punk has treated him and uh so yeah so just keep in mind um again punk has a history and i'm not surprised with with his behavior at all with um at aew because prior to this uh when he did his last when he did his wwe run like towards like the latter end of his wwe run he was having beef with people in the WWE roster left and right. He started some shit with Jericho, which I don't know why he's getting into it with Jericho, because Jericho is a freaking legend. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, Jericho has wrestled for many, many ma major promotions, from ECW to WCW to WWF slash WWE to uh, now AEW. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why... Punk is beefing with Jericho. Jericho doesn't know why either. Jericho has since tried to make amends with uh, Punk, even though Jericho doesn't feel like he's at fault with their fallout and whatever. And I don't think Jericho is either. Um, Hornswoggle has also told um, a story about him having a fallout with Punk over him buying a new cell phone and was trying to regain his contacts so he went to go ask Punk for some phone numbers. Don't believe me? Check this out. All right, y'all. So I'm going to let Hornswoggle tell his story. It's only about seven minutes. So <clears throat> I'm just going to, you know, let him just tell, like, the main portion of the story. And then we'll cut out, cut back to Grimm's video. Swoggle, what are your recollections of the CM Punk WWE feud? Did you see or hear firsthand of any of the problems that were brewing in 2013? Are you still in touch with Punk today? Thanks. No, I'm not. I am not in touch with CM Punk to this day. Tried to be. Did something wrong, didn't you? I did. And you offended him. I offended him. I didn't agree with his. With what would, could you have possibly done to have offended someone with? You ever notice that it's some wannabe tough guy that appears to be the, the uh, softest, you know, mofo in the world. I mean, you know, you, you look at Eminem and how he's been behaving lately, and how CM Punk. You could put him in that in that same category. You know what I mean? Someone who appears to be hard, acts hard, or whatever, talks hard, but then it's so easily triggered, so easily sensitive. Someone so flexible, without rigid rules about life, like him. I asked for one of our friend's phone numbers. From him? Yeah. A mutual friend of, of yours yeah, and that Punk's? That he introduced me to, yeah. And he said, oh, listen, I, uh, I lost a number or something? Yeah, a new phone, can I get this number? Uh, yeah. What were you thinking? I don't know. Well, why would I do that? Now, ask yourself this. You and a friend have a mutual friend, right? And, and the mutual friend both of you have as a contact. Alright? One of y'all gets a new cell phone, right? And you forget to transfer your contacts over or whatever, you know what I mean? So, or you, you're, so you're missing numbers or whatever. Is it really that big of a deal to ask you know what I mean? Your, your, your buddy to, you know, hey, um, I just got a new phone. Um, you know what I mean? I'm missing some, some numbers from, you know, some of our friends. You know, 
do, do you have them and you know can, can I get them from you is that really that big of a deal Hornswoggle basically just said that he and Punk are no longer friends because he asked for for friends numbers was it someone that he didn't like no he, yeah. he's still best friends with to this day Maybe he was trying to protect the other guy no. and didn't like you. He saw it as using. Using punk. punk. Your entire relationship had been predicated on getting we were, the phone we number were, of Yeah, we were, we were like best friends. Right. Best friends. We rode together for years. You know what? Freaking ridiculous. Now, so not only has Punk have had issues with Jericho during their WWE days and has had a silly fallout with Hornswoggle or some mundane shit you know what I mean he's also had beef with Triple H <sighs> you don't believe me let's get into this Triple H video real quick all right y'all so what we're about to hear is an audio clip from uh Stone Cold Steve Austin Smoking Skull Sessions which is Austin's podcast and he had Triple H on as his guest and this episode I believe is on the WWE Network so you guys want to watch the full podcast episode um yeah highly encourage y'all to go check it out on the WWE network but yeah we're gonna let triple h give his testimony as to what happened between him and punk let's, let's check it out that being said i got a lot of emails asking about your opinion of cm punk um, he didn't have the greatest things to say for you on a podcast a couple of months ago uh what is it with you guys or, or are you cool with him or yeah. you have your feelings hurt what no you know it's funny um I remember hearing things about him in um, in the like when he was first uh, coming in, or I, I actually think he might have been an OVW at the time. And like I remember hearing people say, "Oh, you know, the big thing is that you hate this CM Punk kid and you were burying him." And something like, honestly, God, I, I didn't mean this as a knock to him. I didn't even know who he was. You know, we didn't have time then to watch. So apparently, there was a rumor going around where before Punk had debuted on WWE television. Um, according to Triple H, to the best of his knowledge, he thinks Punk was in AEW at the, or OVW, excuse me, at the time. Uh, for OVW, for those of you who don't know, OVW was basically, um, it, it was basically NXT before uh, NXT was, was a thing, you know what I mean? That's where uh, they would use OVW basically as like their training show, um, you know what I mean? Like, like, like their startup show or whatever, and... <clears throat> when a when a talent is fully trained, they their their mic skills are up to par, their ring skills are up to par, and everything, and they got their character and whatever, and they're good to go. WWE would hit up OVW and bring that talent over to now their WWE television or whatever. They would basically do do a call up to to the main roster. Um, it was their development program, basically. That's the term I was looking for. And apparently there was already a rumor going around talking about someone somehow got word to Punk that Triple H didn't like him and whatever. And so they already kind of had like a rocky relationship, supposedly, when Punk came, was called up to WWE. Watch other stuff and watch other, you know, components of the business. I don't think I'd ever seen him or knew who he was. And I was like, I don't know how I hate this guy. I've never even seen him. I don't, I don't even yeah, know who he when is. he went out here in WWE. And, and, then, and then when he came in here, um, I think... Somehow that got carried over, something I don't know to be honest. Right. I, I've never had a beef with him. I never have, um, you know. And then when we when we got further in and and um, you know we worked together, whether it was um, you know when when he uh, first did the thing where he walked out, uh, the, you know the right the, dropped the pipe bomb and the whole thing, and um, we did this storyline and the Nash was brought in and you know, it was done for the right reasons, right? I think it was done to. To, to get us into him um, and get him more over, but we um, the, the decisions that were made were Vince's and were made to help him, and then they didn't work out for whatever reason. Nash couldn't right. hang and, and couldn't be here, and um, but I don't know. He, he held a grudge on that, and he's a weird cat. Like I don't mean that as a knock, but I mean that as a he's hard to get to know. He's he doesn't talk. He doesn't communicate well. I would hear from everybody in my role now as, you know, uh, talent relations and all that. I would hear to everybody that, oh, my God, he's livid today. He's quitting. He's this. He's that. And I'd go to him and say, what's going on? And I'd get 
Well, nothing. Everything's right. fine, you know. And okay, it's tough. So, Punk doesn't communicate very well, according to Triple H. Triple H said he didn't know who Punk was when he was still in their developmental program at the time, you know. But yet somehow, when Punk was like, like I said, called up to like the main roster, you know what I mean? And him and Hunter met, whatever. Somehow, according to Hunter, it carried over and. Apparently, Punk has been holding a grudge against Triple H ever since. And it's like for no reason, over some, some rumors or whatever. And Triple H has tried to work with him. They, they try to do things for him to get him over, as he said. You know, work him in some, in some serious storylines and whatnot. But, you know, things happen, you know. And so they had to, you know, they had to figure something out or whatever. And then, like, like he said, he would hear from other members of the roster. Oh, he's pissed off and all this and that. And it's like, okay, and then, as Triple H said, he was trying to help him, right? He was trying to figure out, hey, what, what's, what's, what's going on? You know, can we, can we, can we talk? Can we, can we work something out? And he said that Punk would just tell him, like, no, nah, everything's cool, everything's fine. So what is he supposed to do when he's left with the impression, like, okay, well, Punk says everything's fine. Everyone else is saying this, but Punk himself saying everything's fine. Like, what? You know what I mean? What? What's there to, to work out or, you know... To what's there that, that that we can that we can fix that we can settle you know so we can move on. I don't know, but anyway, let's go back to uh, Grim's video. All right, y'all. So now we are at the main portion of the video, and if you made it this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, and hopefully you guys will stick around to hear uh, Grim's testimony as far as his experience meeting CM Punk. Let's go ahead and get into Grim's video, but I can hear here. I have had the opportunity to work with so many of the AEW superstars while making videos for my YouTube channels. What's up, everybody? It's Grim, and today I'm going to tell you what those AEW superstars think of me. And I know for a fact that CM Punk hates my guts, and I'm going to tell you the whole story behind it. And he's not lying. Now, CM Punk is in the news right now because he is embroiled in yet another backstage incident this time involving jungle boy jack perry and we are all waiting with bated breath to see what's going to happen with suspensions people leaving the company and what have you but having met cm punk two times i can tell you i side with aw jack perry the elite because cm punk is an attitude cm punk and, and i agree with with, with graham i side with aw and everyone on the roster because before they brought th this this full in everything was nice everything was hunky dory everyone was getting along you know what i mean in perfect harmony and everything everyone was was in sync it was all systems go it wasn't until that was brought in and now people are miserable because tony khan won't let him go which he should gave me attitude the first time i ever met cm punk so i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut grim off there let's get full context what are you saying there punk two times i can tell you i side with aw jack perry the elite because cm punk is an attitude cm punk gave me attitude the first so cm punk gave grim attitude and grim is just a fan dude because cm punk is an attitude CM Punk gave me attitude. The first time I ever met CM Punk was in 2011 at Ringside Fest. But this was really exciting for me because it was my first Ringside Fest. And I got to meet Daniel Bryan. I got to meet Zack Ryder. Hey. And I look just like him. And I got to meet CM Punk. It was a very cool and chill interaction. But at the same time, I kind of felt like when we were asking CM Punk questions about, you know, backstage stuff or dirt cheap things, because that's what we wanted to talk about me and my friend champ i kind of felt like he kind of came back at us with like you guys are smarks like 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 that oh my god here's two uh wrestling fans i kind of got that vibe that he was treating us like we were two fat guys that live in their mom's basement and tweet about our wrestling takes all day and he ain't having it that's kind of just the vibe i got from him but it was a fine interaction Fast forward a year later, and now I meet CM Punk dressed up like Ebenezer Middlesdorf, which was my character at the time. And again, it was a fine interaction. He just looked at me like I was a little bit of a weirdo. 
And he kind of thought that the name was odd when I asked him to sign my thing, Ebenezer Middlesdorf. And then when we shook hands, it just seemed super awkward. Like he was just looking at me like, you are a weird dude. So you're asking, well, Grandma, how do you know he hates you? Well, yeah, it, it, here's the, the, the uh, nitty gritty. Let's get into it. Fast forward to 2015. And I'm spending time hanging out with Brian Myers at an SWF show where I was going to be his manager. For those of you who may not know Brian Myers, uh, you, you might remember Kurt Hawkins, him and Zack Ryder. They used to be the edge heads uh, for edge. They were edges, uh, two henchmen. And um, <clears throat> Brian Myers is actually Kurt Hawkins. So anyway. And as we're standing at his merch table selling merch, I pull out my cell phone and I take a selfie of us and put it on Twitter. I thought that was cool. It's me, Kurt Hawkins, we're at SWF, come meet us, come watch us wrestle, that kind of thing. About 20 minutes later, Ryan Myers pulls out his phone and he looks at me and he laughs. I'm like, what? What are you laughing at? He goes, he says, nothing, dude. I said, no, tell me, what are you laughing at? What, what, what? He goes, fine, if you really want to know. He opens his phone, he turns it around and he shows me. But it was a text from CM Punk. And it, uh, let's see. It said, Grim? Question mark? Really? Question mark, question mark? I hate that guy. CM Punk actually texts Kurt Hawkins to tell him that he hates Grim. What kind of human being does that? Wow. So CM Punk saw Kurt Hawkins retweet of me and him on Twitter and had to text him privately his displeasure that he was hanging out. Which I don't care what anyone says. That's a whole bitch move right there, dude. How are you going to go text one, one of your friends about one of his friends behind his back and, and say that, that you hate him? Like, damn, dude. Damn. You know, the uh, punk portion of his name really, really suits him. But for all the wrong reasons. With me. Super weird behavior. But confirmation. See a punk hates me. I seen it for myself with my own two eyes. So, look at that. There it is. Phil, CM Punk, Phil Brooks. Grim, really, in all caps, I hate that guy. Wow. Okay, I guess that's why I'm blocked. And that's where the bad blood between Blocked him on Twitter. Between me and CM Punk started. Wow. I'm actually honored to be hated that much and CM Punk is such a hater of mine. Meanwhile, I'll sit here and wear a shirt. And you want to know why? I got it for free. <laughs> so let's talk about another huge AEW star. As a matter of fact, the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. All right. So uh, we won't uh, get into the rest of it because I mainly just want this video to be about CM Punk and why I it I cannot you know be a fan of his man. Like I said, the dude is is a toxic toxic human being, dude. He. Stirs up stuff over in WWE, you know, with a lot of people over there for all for the, for the silliest, dumbest reasons. Then he stirs up stuff over in AEW, you know what I'm saying? And he don't give a damn about the fans. What? What the fuck? Again, text one of his one of his wrestling buddies, only to tell him that he hates. Someone who is legit a fan of his. Damn it, Bobby, this just ain't right. Again, what kind of human being does that? Not okay! That is the most disgusting thing, the most disrespectful thing. And like I said, that is a bitch move. I don't care what the CM Punk stands have to say about that. There is no way you can justify this man's behavior towards people. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you, you've been a pro wrestler. I don't care how long you've been in the business. You just don't do people like that, dude. You just don't. And I hope, for Tony Khan's sake, that dude grows a spine and just says, you know what, Punk? The AEW roster here don't like you. You're 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 a problem child. 
you disrespected the company, you disrespected many of people here on the roster, you know what I mean? Without without any, you know, real reason, real good reason, you know. Can't have you here. You got to go. Bye, Felicia. Yeah, I hope they, they, they let him go. And it's not like dude is broke. Supposedly, he has money. So he, he doesn't need to be there. So let him go. I say let, let, let him go. Make AEW great again. Make the rest of your roster happy again. Because dude is just, he's just poison, man. Just walking and talking poison. And I don't care if CM Punk sees this video. What, what, what's he going to do? Make like Eminem and write a cease and desist? Stop talking about me in your videos. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. But if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, odds are it's a damn duck. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste any more time on that dude. You know what I mean? It's just he, He's a whole douchebag. Just He just is. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got to say in this video. And y'all know the deal. Y'all know how to support the channel. And um, I'll be sure to link all of these videos, you know, so you guys can check these out on your own free time, uninterrupted as you would like, um, so you can get the full um, full story on CM Punk. And then also if you want to see Grim's video in full where he talks about other um, – future WWE stars that he's worked with in the past before they made it to AEW. By all means, please do so. Support Grimm. Dude is solid. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's the one that's obviously in my outros. You know what I mean? He did that that cameo for me, which was really nice. You know what I mean? So, yeah, Grimm, if you're watching this, man, shout out to you. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that love. I'm the one that did the uh, the F Gonna Give It To You remix uh, for him <coughs> for for him to use um so yeah man and that, that was a lot of fun and dude and dude showed me a lot of love for that too man so i can't i can't thank him enough but anyway all right y'all it's your boy jason jv saying y'all take care have a blessed one i catch y'all next one peace jason jv on youtube uh what's up with you jason jv what up jason jv just sending love, peace, and blessings to you. JC, you are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, JV? My name is Jimmy Patrick. I'm after the next video. I'm sorry. Who's saying what's up, JV? Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're sad, you're happy. I'm going to be too happy. I'm going to be expecting shit. It's like it occurs all the time. So you ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe, tap the little bell, turn on the notifications, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.